Hey, Tactical Painter, welcome back out to the Suits Crafting Woodshop for Shop Talk Tuesday. I'm actually getting one out on Tuesday this time. Uh, last week, last week, two weeks ago actually, I got it out on, I believe, Thursday, but you guys hadn't heard from me for so long, figured you wouldn't care. And then last week, I figured I wouldn't do a Shop Talk Tuesday. I had a little accident in, not in the shop, but in my personal life. If you look here, this is a little thin. Day before Tuesday, so Monday, I actually uh, made a mistake while trying to trim this up and make it look all nice and clean. Ended up having to shave the entire thing off. And for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you actually got to see some of the pictures, which I will throw up here now, and we'll just make this permanent on the internet. This is me without any facial hair. I go from a fresh 32-year-old down to a 12-year-old. And it's no fun, and the wife told me I had to grow it back, and of course I was already planning on doing so anyway, and so did all of the other people in my life. They're like, dude, I don't know who you are, I'm pretty sure you shouldn't be hanging out at the bar with me later though. <laughs> Sorry, you don't know what you want me to do about that, because it's going to take me about a week or two to grow it back. So this is sitting at about a week and a day's worth of growth back, and uh, by next week I, I should be back up to full myself again because it's been interesting to look at myself in the mirror and including myself on the camera now. So it's Labor Day weekend and uh, although it's Tuesday now, it was Labor Day my weekend. Y'all, you guys had to go back to work on Tuesday, but I actually, it's technically my Sunday this week. And so I uh, told the wife last week, I was like, you know, maybe we should make a trip out to my brother's. My brother lives on the Oregon coast and uh, she said, well, that sounds like a great idea, and she took that idea, and she ran with it, and we've spent the entire weekend at the coast. What turned into, I think we should spend a day at the coast, to we spent three days at the coast, and it was wonderful. We had a great time, and I love seeing my brother. Uh, it, it's hard sometimes. We live in Portland, and he lives in the coast, and, and being an hour and a half away... Um, you know, you don't get to see each other as much as you as you want, especially when you know there's siblings that you like. So, and I have siblings that I like, <laughs> and so it's uh, it's tough sometimes. And so we got to spend some time out there with him. I actually helped him uh, work on his patio, which he was uh, in the middle of building. He was working on putting a roof over a, a deck out his backyard that he had just built, and so it, it was a good time. Had a lot of fun with him. Uh, took his kids and my kids, and we all went down to the beach and played in the water uh, while the tide was coming in and. So it was um, nerve-wracking for the adults, but the kids had a great time, and it was just a matter of watching them, making sure that we all stayed safe. We watched the waves and got them back whenever we saw one that was going to be breaking too close and coming in and then was going to rush up. So we had a great time. Everyone stayed safe, and uh, we all came back with all the children we left with. So it was a good, good time. And uh, Oregon Coast, that water was frigid. But it was refreshing because the air was warm and the water was cold and it sure felt good. I enjoyed it and uh, I'm so thankful for my wife. She is the master planner when it comes to um, setting up vacations and going out and doing things and coming up with ideas on stuff. I'll have an idea. I'll say, you know, maybe we should do this. And she just runs with it and I'm so glad that she did. Thank you so much, sweetheart. I know that you will watch this later and you'll see this and I greatly appreciated it uh, because you know more than most exactly how much time I needed off and I thank you for that. I also have one of the greatest wives ever because while we were down there we actually went to Rockaway Beach and then on our way back we were driving to Tillamook and I saw a little shop and I saw the shop and we we're just driving by we were driving past we were going to Tillamook and as we were driving by I saw this place called the Myrtlewood Factory Outlet and I saw it and I was like honey she goes We've got to come back by here tomorrow. We'll stop there, and you can go in and look. I was like, you're the best. You're the best. And uh, so on our way back out the next morning, we stopped in Tillamook. We got breakfast there at the Denny's, and then we were driving up to Seaside. And on our way by, we stopped off at the Myrtlewood Factory Outlet. I'll throw a picture that I took up here um, out in front of the shop. Went inside, took a look around. They've got some awesome stuff. If you're ever in Garibaldi is where it's at, Garibaldi, Oregon, and uh, they've got some really fun uh, little shops out there. They've got um, some of the old steam engines that they used to run on the railways and stuff. Really awesome stuff out that way. You guys should go by Garibaldi sometime, check it out. But the Myrtlewood uh, Factory Outlet, they've got all sorts of uh, different arts with uh, Myrtle Wood and Thuya Burl and just all sorts of different woods, redwoods, and really awesome place. They've also got um, like 
uh, crystal rocks, uh, what are they, the geodes and things. I've got naturally occurring geodes and art and tables with, you know, geode tables like you guys see river tables. You haven't seen anything awesome until you see a natural geode table, like a real one. They're just phenomenal. Of course, those are really expensive, um, but some of the other artwork was great. But then in the back, they also have an area where uh, wood crafters and wood turners can go back and they can buy the actual lumber that they're using and harvesting. And then uh, you can actually pick up turning blocks, cutoffs, and all sorts of fun stuff. So while I was there, I did pick up a few things. And really excited to do some of these. This is actually a piece of Myrtle Burl. And really excited to get this turned up. Don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. You guys can see all the burl in there. And uh, really an awesome piece. It's got some really nice figuring in there. You can see the burl that's in the in the side there. Really a cool piece. It's not quite square. You can see, um, or it's pretty close to square, but it's a little longer this way than it is here. So not sure what I'll do with it yet, but I couldn't pass it up when it was only five bucks and it was a piece of myrtle burl and a cutoff bin. It's like, phew, that's coming home with me. And I, I just carried it around me with the store that rest of the time. And then as we were going back through, my wife was pulling out a couple of pieces and I saw this one from this side profile as she was pulling out a piece to show me, it's like, babe, don't care about the piece in your hand, but that one next to it, that's coming home with us. And she's like, well, come on, this piece is so much prettier. I was like, you're looking at the end grain. And what I saw when you pull it out is this right here. And she goes, oh, oh, that's pretty. And it's like, yeah, this is called figuring. And this is primo stuff right here. This is gorgeous. So got a piece of uh, figured myrtle wood. And you see it's got figuring all the way through on both sides. So this is going to be a fully figured piece of wood. And, uh, you know, I, I like my things fully figured. Wood and women, whatever. It's a terrible joke. <laughs> and uh, so it's a beautiful piece of wood. Really excited. It's got some nice grain color to it. Um, the wood itself, I mean, isn't too much to write home about, but that figuring is gorgeous. So that figuring is going to really just be a gorgeous piece of wood there. And then I looked over in a $2 section uh, bin, and I found this piece. It's got a knot hole in here, and the knot has some cracks in it and it passes all the way through to the back side. I've actually ordered some Total Boat Epoxy, uh, two to one ratio, uh, high performance, clear casting epoxy. Uh, and thank you to Philip Danner uh, with Danner Builds on Instagram. He actually gave me a coupon code so I could get it for 20% off. So I really appreciate that, Phil. Thank you so much. Um, then I'll actually, I'll fill this crack in, um, this that, that gap in there that goes all the way through on the knot. And oh, I don't know what I'll fill it in with, but it's a really nice piece. It's got some figuring, it's got some burling, and then, you know, some little spalting areas. So I'm really looking forward to that. Don't know what I'll do with it yet, but for two bucks, I couldn't pass it up because it's a really nice size. It's square and uh, about probably three and a half inches tall. So yeah, really a nice piece. Three and a half inches? More like four and a half inches. So it's actually a really nice piece. For those of you who don't know, my finger width span is exactly nine inches long. And my forearm is exactly a foot long. So I, I, I'm built for measurements, let me tell you. Um, so, but I use my forearm, which your forearm is the same length as your foot, because people don't appreciate it when I take off my shoes to measure things. They look at me funny. So I use my forearm. But, <laughs> but yeah, really a nice piece. Looking forward to it. Just got to fill that crack in. That way uh, nothing bad happens while it's turning. And I want to preserve that knot. So I might just fill it in with black, um, just so that it just kind of fills in with the knot there. Um, either that or like something that's dark brown, maybe, um, throw in some like alumalite dye when I, when I do it in order to make it match that. That way it's natural with it. And maybe, you know, that, that's big enough to become like a small jewelry box or something, I'll bet. So that's what I picked up at the factory outlet. While we were there, we also got, they had little like, um, gemstones and, uh, you know, just polished rocks and things that were really pretty and nice colors and, uh, let the kids pick out a few, you know, and they bought and brought those home. They think that's the greatest thing. I pick up nice wood. They get nice rocks. Everyone's happy. Love vacations. So that's enough about going to the Myrtle Wood Factory outlet. Um, that's about all that I picked up there, but it's really exciting. And I actually talked to them, showed them some of my pens, and they showed some interest, gave them a business card. And we talked about doing some... Um, wholesale pricing on some stuff so you guys might be able to pick up some of my pens from that place if the deal goes through so we'll just have to see it might be exciting um, or it could be a lot of work that I can't upkeep with but we'll just have to see my workload is about to get lighter because I've almost got people trained at my office 
So workload's supposed to go down here really, really soon. I know I've been saying that for a long time, but we have ran into so many hiccups along the way that I'm really hopeful this time. We're getting really close. One of the other things that I've had going on, I actually got a shipment done for uh, Ryan McCarthy with McCarthy Woodworks. I've uh, been talking back and forth with him on Instagram and we came up with a whole bunch of different things that I'll show you guys up here um, of stuff that he wanted me to do for him. So I've got that, actually that first order shipped out. He actually sent me another order, which I'll probably show you guys next week because I didn't bring the box out of what we're going to be doing for him. i got to start getting them dried up and stabilized and once I get that done, then I can start casting them. Uh, but along with that, he also sent me some really cool stuff I'm excited for. This is one of them. I had uh, had some pieces that I had to let cool down, and so I grabbed this out of the box and was sitting it out with me and just picking out all the bark. And this is a piece of apple burl. You don't see apple burl too often. Most orchards won't allow you to come over and take their burls. They are uh, very protective of their trees. They won't let you do that. So apple burl is a rare item. I mean, it's not super rare. You can find it, but you got to kind of look in the right places because they're just in the random areas at just the right times. And so you can find it, but it's uh, not the easiest thing to find all the time. So, but I got this piece from Ryan, really excited for it. I'm going to be filling in all of these voids and you can see that they go all the way through. Let me see if I can get the right angle here. I don't know that I can. There we go. You can see that they actually pass all the way through. So I'm going to get this dried up, stabilized, all of that bark chipped out of it. Because I've still got a little bit down on the inside there. You can see i um, still got a little bit of bark that I've got to chip out and clean out, get it dried. And then I'm going to get it stabilized. And I'm going to stabilize it out in the open in the oven. I'm not going to roll it up in aluminum foil. So that way any excess stabilization juice that does come out of it will evaporate off instead of um, boiling up on the surface on the inside, and then you have to go in and pick that out too. Um, so I'm just going to let it s stabilize out in the open oven and evaporate off, and then I'm going to cast that. And I haven't decided what I'm going to cast it in yet. I'm testing out some different colors. Because it's apple wood, I'm kind of thinking like a red delicious apple red or like a Granny Smith apple green. If I can find something that is close to those colors, I'm kind of thinking that. There's also a red to green color shift um, powder that Solar Color Dust has out that when you are looking at it, it's green. You take it outside and it turns red. I think that would be fun. Or is that backwards? Yeah, it's green and then it turns to red. And I think that would be fun. Maybe adding some pearl powder in it. I've got to do a test on it to see before I cast this up. Um, I talked with, um, I forget her name, start with an A. I talked with a gal over at Solar Color Dust. She says that you should be able to add pearl powder into their Solar Color Dusts and that it will not um, affect the amount of color change. So long as you're not doing like a one-to-one -one ratio of pearl to the resin, and then it should work out fine. So I can make it pearly so that it gives it some interest, um, but it should still change color. So I'm going to do a test on that and just verify before I go ahead and cast up this piece because I do not want to ruin this. This is too cool. So thank you so much, Ryan McCarthy. I really appreciate it. I've had a lot of fun doing the collaboration with you. And we're going to get working on your second order now that I'm back from vacation. I actually have been working with some guys in North Carolina called Burlwood Supply Company. And these guys have just opened up their online store. If it's not opened up already, it should be really soon. And they are just awesome guys. They're all veteran-ran. Burl Supply Company. So Burlwood Supply Company on North Carolina. Um, they also sell on eBay and they even have an Etsy store. And I'll see if I can't throw a link down it below. These guys are too cool and they've got some awesome wood. So please check them out. Show them some love. Um, they're just getting their feet under them, uh, getting into the Burlwood Supply uh, online store. And so I want to give them some love because they've got some awesome stuff. I got these for some really good prices. So let me start showing some of them off. So I got an awesome piece of, this is a silver maple burl, so it's got some awesome figuring. It's got some really good burl colors to it. Really a beautiful piece. You can see the figuring going through right here. Awesome piece. Really excited to um, do something with this. I don't know, but the prices that I was getting them at, I could not very well pass them up. Also got a really nice piece of spalted maple. Um, it's mostly just kind of punky. There's not really a whole lot of lines going through here. But the punkiness, you can definitely tell, uh, is uh, here on the sides. And I'm going to be doing up some casting of these. 
and which is the next bit that I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm going to be doing some die stabilizing on these, and we're going to get them uh, dyed up. The punkiness is going to absorb the dye really well, and so I'm going to probably do some double die stabilizing on this and really just have some fun with this stuff because the price that I got some of these pieces at, I mean, you can have, I can have all sorts of fun with it and not feel like I'm breaking the bank uh, because they have good, good pricing. So go check them out. Got some really nice live edge pieces from them as well. Live edge maple burl pieces. And here's some more live edge burl pieces. And even with the bark still attached, so I can dry these out with the bark, chip it off real easy. And it preserves all of those little um, spiky bits. You know, when you are shipping this stuff, you know, you want the bark on because the bark actually preserves all the little spiky bits because the spiky bits that come out that make these like mountainous figures when you do um, the hybrid blanks, you know, you want those preserved because if those break and snap, they don't look as cool. And so having the bark attached is actually a primo. You want that. You don't want them to pick it off for you. You want to leave that on there and that way you can do it uh, because then you know that it's going to be preserved and it's going to not get damaged in shipping. Here's another piece, still got some bark in there. Um, and this one actually has some uh, worm and beetle damage. And so this has got all sorts of fun voids and lines and everything going through it. It's kind of a punkier piece, but yeah, it's got all sorts of, you can see more voids and lines there that I'm going to fill with resin and it's going to make for some really neat effects. So that's gonna be fun. Here's another piece, spalted maple as well. That's got, and you, this one actually has the black lines and things going around it and through it. and Really a gorgeous piece, got some nice colorations to it. And then it's even got a little bit of figuring, little burl marks in there. But yeah, spalting's really, really neat. Here's another piece of maple burl there as well. You can see that it's got some spalting, it's got some punkiness to it. And then uh, it's got some, looks like pole beetle holes that uh, came through. And so it's got some voids and things I'm gonna have to fill in, but all in all, really a great piece of wood. That was box one, here's box two. Got some more pieces with bark still attached. So there's some more maple burl that are gonna be really fun to do some casting with or just cut into pen blanks. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with all of them. Um, most of them are gonna end up being pen, pen blanks. Some of them I plan on making some platters and saucers and things with. I wanna make myself a little catch-all tray because whenever you know I change pants, um, you know, uh, you know, I toss my dirty clothes in the laundry at night. I want a place to toss all of my equipment, all of my gear, all of my stuff. I want to throw it on this catch-all tray. And then in the morning, when I go to put my new pair on, I know exactly where that stuff's at. Because right now, I've just got like this little tiny dish, and it doesn't hold all the stuff that I carry. One of these days, maybe I'll do an EDC. You guys can see all the stuff I carry. Um, I actually carry a lot of stuff on me at all times. So here's a couple more pieces. So like I said, you guys go check them out. They're in North Carolina, Wood Burl Supply Company, and they've got just some awesome stuff. One of my favorite pieces I'm really looking forward to is this piece right here. Um, I want to make like a business card stand or something out of this. You can see the angle that this one's sitting at. It's got this steep angle, and I think that leading up to like a business card holder here and like a pen displayer or something, uh, maybe cutting it down in half, and then I could actually get maybe two out of them because this is sitting at about an inch and three quarters, maybe an inch and seven eighths. And so there's plenty of room here to do a couple of things with it. And so I might cut it down to a three quarters, maybe an inch and uh, and make a business card holder for the pen display for like a desk or something and uh, just make it really beautiful. Looking forward to it. So thanks guys over there at Woodboro Supply Company. I really appreciate it and all of the work that you guys did with me. Um, they also do bundling on shipping. So if you're just getting one piece, they you know, charge you one price, you get two pieces, they charge you two things for shipping, but if you buy three, they'll actually bundle them all together, throw it in one box, and then they will ship that all in one shipping price. So it's really awesome. Great group of veterans over there that are running that show, and really excited to find them and get the name out there. Well, I thought I brought them out with me, but I actually forgot them, but I picked up some cactus juice dyes from Turntex. Curtis over there at Turntex picked up some cactus juice dyes, and we have been testing those out in the shop and they are looking phenomenal. I am so excited. I've got one picture up here I can show you guys. I meant to bring them out with the shop with me. I forgot them inside. I'm not going to go inside and grab them uh, because then my daughters will cling on to me like little monkeys and 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 then I won't get back out to the shop. So, uh, But I want to show you guys just this picture. They've got some phenomenal colors they've come out with. Um, these are electric blue and teal green 
And the thing about the, the cactus juice dyes, you can't also use them in your Illumilite. So do know that um, they are strictly for just mixing in cactus juice. But the vibrance that you get out of those colors and the, the saturation that I'm getting out of those colors is phenomenal. I am so excited to be using them. They've got great contrast. They've got great saturation. They work really, really well. And they don't settle over time. They're a liquid dye as opposed to a uh, Lumilite. Um, sometimes the pigment can settle out and you always have to stir it up and stuff before you use it. Um, with these, it's not that way. It is liquid. It stays buoyant inside the cactus juice and it is phenomenal stuff now it won't replace all colors that alumilite has for the alumilite dyes so if you want a forest green they don't have a forest green they have a teal green um, but they don't have like a deep forest green that you can get with the alumilite dyes so it doesn't replace all things the electric blue is kind of like a light blue they also have a brilliant blue but like if you want like a rikon deep blue they don't have a color that will do the rikon deep blue so it's not going to replace all of your colors. The Illumilite dyes are still the way to go if you want a full spectrum of colors. But they do have a lot of colors. And if you know how to color mix, uh, myself as a landscape painting artist as well, I do know how to do a lot of custom color mixing, which is actually how I came up with this wine purple color. Um, I had a customer that wanted to get a wine type color. And so I came up with this color and she, you know, it kind of, um, like a Merlot Chardonnay, I forget what, which one it is. I'm not a wine person myself, but I nailed the color. She was really happy with it. And so, you know, you can custom mix colors if you know how the color wheels work and uh, the amount of pigments and being able to see like, you know, what colors to mix up in order to reach certain effects or knowing how to look that up and then understanding like saturation levels of different pigments and different things. Cause like to reach this, level um you know i had to use both purple and red but less purple than red so with the alumilite dyes the purple is really highly saturated highly concentrated but the red isn't as such so with uh trying to make like a maroon or a wine color like i've got here uh you need to add purple and red but less purple than usual so if i were mixing it up with paints it's a four to two ratio of four parts purple to two parts red in order just to give the purple a reddish hue. But with this, I actually had to do a one to one ratio of purple or red because the purple was so much more saturated than the red. As soon as I put in the two drops of red, the purple just hardly changed color at all. So if you know your color wheels, you can really use those Illumilite dyes to great effect. But the cactus juice dyes are filling a gap of making really vibrant, highly contrasted um, burl stabilizations. I'm really excited to use it, and I'm loving what I've got coming out, and I'm gonna be turning up one of the pieces on an American Patriot pen kit here really soon, so you guys will be able to see it turned and finished. Um, I'm doing that for a customer who is actually retiring from the Navy. She's ordered six pens for people who have meant a lot to her, and so I'm gonna be turning that up on the lathe here uh, for her real soon. Well, this was supposed to be a short video, uh, which is what I promised my wife. And looking at the time, I better go in and put my daughter to bed. So thank you so much for joining me out in the shop today. This is Tactical Painter out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop signing out. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check out all of my other videos here on the sides. Take care and happy turning.